What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Why We Love PlayStation VR. Sitting across from me this week and every week, I don't always kill animals. It's Desra. And I do. So, sitting across from me is Brian Paul. And every week on Why We Love PlayStation VR, we blow the dust off of an old PlayStation <laughs> VR game. Had to think Nailed about it. that. Yep. Uh, and we see if it's been given any love by developers, see if it's been patched, updated, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. And then we review it and let you know if it's worth your time. Yes. That being said, what game did we decide to review this week, Desiree? Uh This week we're talking about Dick Wild, which is not what you're thinking. That's exactly what I'm thinking, <laughs> because it is by Bulwark Games, published by Playstack Limited, mm -hmm. released May 16, 2017, released for $14.99. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So what kind of that, game is this? That is a true, that is a true statement. It is, um, I mean, at its core, it's a wave shooter. I mean, at its core, yeah, it's a wave shooter. Yeah. I just repeated what you said, but put, you did put like <laughs> very, very serious different, pauses in the middle of yes, the sentence. Different em emphasis on the wrong syllables. That's right. Yes, but I, but okay, but this isn't this isn't I guess your typical wave shooter. Um, no, it's I mean yes and no. It's it's not your typical wave shooter. It's got some some comedy to it. Um, it's got a little okay. Yeah. But before we even <laughs> before we even get into what, what, how you play the game, yeah, I need to, I need to hear your thoughts on the mm -hmm. comedy because. It might be my least favorite part of this game. Yeah, it's so it's it's not as let's say crass as say a Borderlands two. Sure, um, but it is very much in the same kind of mentality. It's very like middle schooly, junior high, whatever kind of jokes you might think you'd make about you know a, a redneck shooting animals, they're in there, yeah. and uh, all twelve of them, again and again and again. Yeah, I, I heard the same lines over and over. And yeah, over. yeah, which is a little surprising. You th but, you think that like. You know, silly little quotes would be mm. easy to just like write about a hundred of them, do a hundred lines of voiceover, yeah. and then just throw them in at random. But I mean, yeah, but twelve sounds right. Yeah, there, there are a couple here and there that give me a chuckle, and you know, it's not. I, I am being a little unfair. It's not always the same. There's there's a couple that I only heard like once, maybe twice. Yeah, that kind of like, oh, where did uh, something about a pecker uh, was involved at one point. But but the one yeah. the one the one that I quoted at the beginning was mm -hmm. like I don't always kill animals but I do sedate them and something along those lines. Yes, yeah. I heard that. Like I do experiments. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. I played for a few hours today mm -hmm. and I heard that probably ten times. Yeah, it, it is. It is pretty repetitive. Um, but honestly, the good news is you won't really be paying too much attention to the voiceover because you'll be getting your ass kicked. You'll be too busy dying yeah. uh, because that's that's the other thing or one of the other things that makes this game uh, unique. Yes, is is just the ridiculous over the top difficulty. It, it is. It is very much like the the, the get good uh, game for PSVR. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I guess I had some thoughts about that for the end, but yeah, we can. I guess get into that right now. We, we can totally say it yeah. if you want. At, at uh, the very beginning, it's very hard, and we'll talk more about that later. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but so okay. at the very beginning, Dick Wild is very hard. Yeah, I mean, insert jokes. No way you could misinterpret here, any of that here. In here, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to edit that out? No, no. Perfect. Yeah, Listen, yeah. but yeah, but it, the comedy, the, the whole redneck comedy thing, mm -hmm. um, it, it goes it goes further than just the jokes, right? Yeah. Even like, even the weapons and the weapon design, and actually, I find that really uh, really charming. Honestly, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, it's everything's like everything's like duct taped together and mm -hmm. beer cans and there's all sorts of like stuff you'd find around a tool shed. Right, and and that goes through the design. Th Pretty much for everything, um, even even the loading screen, even the main the main loading screen. You are in what I assume is Dick Wild shed, and there's just kind of crap everywhere, and you can shoot it, and you know there's a whole interaction level right there. But it, it does the, the whole main menu. You can I, I I think I think it's the most fun to just hang out in that main menu. Yeah, and look around. Yeah, and shoot stuff. Every everything in that in that cabin is interactable. Mm -hmm. Interact. Why does that word sound wrong all the time? Interactive. Interactive. <laughs> it, it's able to be interacted with. Yes. Nice, and you shoot like this dark gun, and that's how you interact with the menus. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a lot. It's a lot of fun before you even get into the game. Right, it does give you an um, an introduction to kind of what you're getting getting into. Yeah. And uh, the weapons themselves, I mean, there are eight to seven. Uh, if, if I can, remember, right? Did you say eight to seven? Eight to seven, depending on if you're playing with the move controllers or the aim controllers. Okay, so seven to eight. Yes. So there's fifteen weapons. Um. Yeah, but a lot of them are just kind of like duplicates of the other one. The other version sure but okay so let's talk about this a little yeah. bit since we're getting into it um you can play with move controllers mm -hmm. and for the most part when you're using two move controllers you're dual wielding yes whether with, it yeah. be two guns or 
some there's there's one in particular that I enjoy. Mm. It's a uh, a trash can lid. Ah oh, yes. With a was is it a bear trap on it? Uh, yeah, it's a bear trap and, and then a shotgun it's a shield mm-hmm. and uh, and a shotgun. And what, yep. what a great combination! Oh yeah, it's, it's fantastic. And I think for the move controller, it's definitely my favorite uh, my favorite weapon. Nice because uh, not only do you have you know the bear trap, so it's one of the few weapons that actually has some defense to it, yeah. which is super important. Um, the shotgun itself has two modes, kind of ha- has a burst sort of buckshot mode and just a one shot slug. Um, I, I guess we'll, we'll kind of run through them. There's a nail gun, or mm-hmm. well, dual nail guns that have either. Uh, most of the weapons have a primary and secondary fire kind of option, and so the nail guns are either a single shot, uh, very accurate, or sort of a burst fire kind of machine gun spray and pray. Uh, there is the uh, the paintball guns. So this is my favorite. Okay. From, from the get go. Yeah. And I think the reason they were my favorite is because you don't you don't have to reload them. Nope. And when you shoot your targets, mm-hmm. they turn colors. Yeah, yes, that right? was a nice actually touch. Actually, shooting yep. paintballs, and and it's like this seamless spray, so you don't have to be terribly accurate mm-hmm. because you're just like spraying out into in, into the water or into right. the, into the air. Um, but I, I found mm-hmm. that I, that's a great beginner weapon. Okay, because even though you don't have to reload it, you do have to keep an eye on the air pressure gauge. Right, and if it gets too high, then, <laughs> then instead of shooting out uh, really fast, mm-hmm. though the the uh, the paint gun pellets. Yep, uh, they, they kind of like. It's going to yeah. dribble out. So it was actually what was happening is the air pressure was actually getting low. Because right. you're running out of pressure to... Pff, Did I say fire. it the other way? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, there, there's also, let's see, uh, the bow and arrow, which is only for the moves. Um, which is exactly like, I mean, hey, archery and VR, where have we seen that before? Everywhere. But uh, the slight difference is an electrified bow and arrow. So it actually has an area effect. You hit one and you get a little chain lightning. Um, and then who else do we have? Um, the dual revolvers. Dual revolvers, ended yes. Ended up being my next favorite. Really? Okay. Because they're simple, mm-hmm. right? But but man, they, they shoot much faster than, than the paintball guns. They do. And so when you're trying to shoot a bird way out in the distance, yeah. and you get the laser pointer right on it, it's it's so much yeah. easier. But uh, unlike a lot of these weapons, you do have to reload it. You do and have to reload has, uh, Six shots, and the reloading is a little slow. So when things get really frantic, yeah. um, uh, it's, it's a little crazy. And then, oh, the harpoon and saw blade. Oh, yeah, like the yes. saw blades. Uh, so it's basically uh, you have a harpoon for your uh, main fire, which is a good, pretty solid distance weapon. It kind of has a little drop, so you have to get your eye in for that. And then the alternate fire is firing buzzsaw blades, which skim across the surface of the water. Which is very cool. Yeah. And uh, oh, so here's one that I, I was reading people's advice, and a lot of people seem to like this combo, and I couldn't, I just couldn't get it to work the grenade rocket launcher. Couldn't get it to work. Well, it was just I, I. I was terrible with it. Oh, I was terrible with it too. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah. It, so it's a you know one mode is uh, it launches grenade, lobs grenades. The other is fire rocket. Mm-hmm. And then in your other hand, you actually have the detonator, so you can lob the grenade and then make it explode whenever you want. Very difficult. Very difficult. <laughs> yeah. But and so you, so you're saying, Des, Des, there's yes. all of these there's all of these options for dual wielding. Mm-hmm. How does that translate to the aim controller? Um, basically, makes a bigger version of the same gun. Yeah, pretty much. And then uh, they're 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 a little more accurate in some cases, a little more powerful. I think the the aim control does give you a little uh, a better sense, and you can you know sight down the weapon. Um, and then they just get rid of the bow and arrow, which you know. It would, what do you it, had, what do you gonna do? Well, you could have made a crossbow. You could have made a crossbow. Yeah. Um, but but at the same time, I think this was I think this they had this ready for the aim launch. Yes. And it was the second game actually that you could play with the aim after Farpoint. Yeah. And. And I think it's I think it's fascinating what they decided to do, mm-hmm. you know, because there there are moments in I'm trying to think like I mean even in Firewall when you have yep. like the little when you have like the little pistol mm-hmm. right and you're holding the big aim controller you're like this doesn't feel right yeah you know and so it's awesome that they they, they very well could have just been like okay we're gonna we're gonna map a single one of the move con- right. uh, guns to the aim controller mm-hmm. and instead they they created all new weapons for the most part yeah uh, and and it and it feels like and, it, and they do they feel bigger they feel more powerful and it, and it feels great one to one with the moves. it does. That being, or uh, with the aim controller. Mm-hmm. That being said, I much, much prefer using the dual moves on this. I found I had a different favorite weapon for each one. For the aim controller, it was the harpoon saw blade. Yeah. Uh, because the harpoon, you get some nice distance action, and when things get really crazy, you can just spam the saw blades for for close up. And I think it was the best out of all the weapon combos, the best combination. But for the move controllers, shotgun, shotgun trash can lid. Yeah. That's that. That's my jam. I had a lot of fun with the trash can mm-hmm. lid and uh, and and shotgun, um, but but what I realized yeah. was that I don't I don't know if there's like a best weapon 
in this game. No. I think they're all really good. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things I love most about this game. Okay. Is that all the weapons are so great that this isn't just, hey, you know, this level has this, so you should use this kind of gun. Right. It's, it's, hey, I'm going to choose this weapon type, and Mm -hmm. I'm going to go through all of these stages. Right. And I'm going to learn how to use that. And, and And it plays so, so differently for the most part that it's almost like playing you know, 15 different games. Yeah, it, it is, I mean, because the waves are all the same. I mean, not in that, like, the same thing comes at the same time. Yeah. It's just that depending on the, the weapon you choose, that doesn't change what's happening. Right. So it's really, it's, you know, there's that aspect of it, like, oh, I'm going to master these different weapons, or it's more of a, what kind, you know, how do you like playing? Mm-hmm. Like, do you like waiting until everything's right up in front of you and taking care of it then? Then, yeah, maybe use, like, the, the, the burst fire mode or do you like trying to be the sniper and like the revolvers to make that work you really got to be good at taking things out of the distance because you're not going to have time to take out the close targets right now oh. you mentioned you mentioned that about the different levels mm-hmm. um so it's divided into and my chair is so squeaky today. yeah really. like, i'm trying to make it stop squeaking <laughs> by like moving it a certain way it's just not happening so if that's you can right. hear a squeaky chair that's me mm-hmm. i think it's okay now yeah. um so uh so there, there's there's three regions Yes. Like three little islands you mm-hmm. can go to. And there's three levels in each region. Right. So there's a total of nine levels and uh three of them are locked. Yeah, the heart the the Insane. Is that what it is? Insane? Yes. Yeah, easy uh, no, normal, easy. hard and oh, hardcore. Yeah. Hard, I thought it was insane. Maybe it's insane. I don't yeah, know. I, I wrote down insane. hardcore, I'm not sure okay. why. Um but but so 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 you, you have to beat the normal and mm-hmm. hard ones to unlock insane. Yeah. Um and I think normal is uh, is is very much mislabeled. It, it, yeah, that's and that's the biggest I think controversy about this game yeah. is it is hard. It is really oh um you know before we actually get into that one more kind of game mechanic we didn't talk about yeah. is at the end of each wave, mm-hmm. these four boxes pop up and you have a choice. You can uh, regain health. Mm-hmm. You can fire a bunch of mines. So basically, uh, the other three uh, kind of a turret pops up next to you and fires out whichever one of these you choose. One would be the mines. Right. It kind of lo- lobs a bunch of mines out there which creatures can run into. One is rockets to take care of flying, long distance flying creatures. And one is kind of a mid-range turret which sort of, well, does exactly that. Right. It's a Gatling gun which takes out the stuff in the mid-range. And um, the ammo is sort of kind of recycled. So let's say you did mines this round and it didn't use up all the mines and you chose turrets, you would find that the turrets actually start with more ammo than they did uh, last time around, so right, so, and yeah. this is and this is super important because mm-hmm. this all comes down to the strategy, and because uh, because really, like say you were say you chose the mines, yes, right, and and you do get the option between each level or between each wave of the level, um, so you cho- you choose the mines and, and it shoots out I don't know what is it six seven mines or something like that and it kind of mm-hmm. like creates a a barrier around it, right, right, so so you don't want you actually don't want any of the uh, the enemies to hit those mines. Right, because because yeah. there's only a limited number of mines. When when those mines blow up, it's gonna mm-hmm. only a few more are gonna get replaced, and then that's it. Yeah, ideally they're kind of like a backup for like, oh, I just right. happened to miss that crocodile. So, right. Yeah. right, you you want you want that turret, you want those mines, you want those rockets to be there, mm-hmm. like when you really need them. Right, you know. So right. so I found myself because the turret's on the right, or because all these things are being fired from the right. Mm-hmm. I found myself focusing on the right first and then like sweeping to the left okay. and taking care of those things first. So, so whatever was over there yeah. wasn't getting wasted. Um, and, and there is, yeah. And if you don't want any of the three, um, I was going to say defensive options, but I guess it's, uh, they're also offensive options. Yeah. yeah. They're both. Um, you, yeah. You're, you've got a health bar. And you can choose health, but it doesn't refill your health completely. No, it doesn't. What is it, like 50% at best? Yeah, yeah. It's it's so. it's rough, man. It is rough. <laughs> so, like, so, and it it doesn't take much for your health to drop. Like, it's no. so easy to get swarmed in this game. Mm-hmm. Like, that, like, so the next, it's, birds, you don't even understand. Like, if you haven't <laughs> played this game, like, there'll be, like, a wave of piranhas that you'll see, like, way off in the distance. And they'll, like, you know, go into the water and then, like, like is it five or six in, like, a group. And yeah. they're, they're jumping, like, in a pattern, mm-hmm. but not at the same time, right? So, and you can see them, and they're like, oh, no, the, the, the piranhas are coming at me. And, and, like, when they get close, yeah. they will jump at your face. And then there's, like, seagulls flying overhead. And if even if they don't attack you, they're going to poop on you. Yes. Which, the second that crap gets on your face... Mm-hmm. I mean, good luck seeing anything for the next few seconds. Yeah, it's, and it's totally like, um, 
so to put things in perspective, like we just got the Switch and we've been playing the, the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, whatever. Yeah, great game. And um, oh, it's fantastic. But like we noticed the ink in that is so much worse than any other Super Mario game. Like, you know, older like Double Dash and like that. You get hit by the ink, you could still see around it. These seagulls are like the new like ink. You cannot see anything once they hit you. And yeah. it's it lasts for a while. And then like that, there's these other fish, uh, spitters, I think. Yeah, that's what they do there. They spit. Yeah, they spit these and it's the same thing. So and not only does it make it hard to see, it also does damage when it hits. Right. So it's 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 a double whammy. Yeah, you got you got swordfish that are that are coming at you and, and they they will ram right into you. Mm. Like it is just it is nonstop. I feel like the second uh, and not to mention, of course, the sharks. Yes, it's like a ton of yeah. sharks, and, and a lot of them take more than more well, than a few hits. And, and here's here's the thing: the difference between the different areas of the map are just basically in kind of the paint job everything gets. Yeah. Like, um, you know, the first in the the lagoon or swamp area, there's you know alligators and uh, electric eels and things like that. And then you go to the other uh, was it tundra? No, the uh, oh, I didn't write down the name. The, well, well, basically, now it says it's all dinosaurs. Well, it's actually the things, you know, the mos- Mosasaurus are basically just the crocodiles. And then there's the lagoon, uh, in which the crocodiles are basically just sharks. And so they act the same way. They kind of get hit this with the same amount of damage. So it doesn't really radically change right. the gameplay. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. There's, it's, there's, there's enemy types, is what you're saying. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like here are the ones that you are visible the whole time but and, and, and stay in the water but you can hit them the entire time right here are the ones that are flying around and, and whatever so there yeah there's enemy types um and it's it, it gets very overwhelming very quickly the second you let a few get past you yeah or the second you get hit by like some bird crap or something that's going to like obstruct your vision mm-hmm. it just it like it just the shit hits the fan so fast right. and, and you'll you'll you know if you end up buying this and, and playing it you'll play the first one two maybe even third wave and you're like, I don't know what these guys are talking about. Ugh. And then all of a sudden, it's just—it's not just that it's difficult. There's just this massive difficulty spike. Right. It goes from, oh, I got this. I'm, you know, I know shooters. Brian and doesn't know what they're talking about. And then by wave four or five, it's over. The, yeah. There were there were levels where like I died in the first wave. Yeah, and I was like, wow, I don't think <laughs> I've ever died this fast in any game so consistently. Mm-hmm. Now, the, so the thing is, is that the other thing that makes this more than a traditional wave shooter. Yeah. Is that it? Half of this game isn't about shooting. Half of this game is about dodging. Yes, and that, that's what that was the point I was going to make. When you first play this, you're going to do what you've been taught to do in wave shooters and pick your position and just aim and be the god of guns, you know. Yeah. Um, but you can't do that in this game. No. This and and there are also um, there are these kind of golden carps that jump up, and you're going to be playing like, oh, there's a leaderboard, there's points. I'm going to hit those golden carps because I want to make points. I want to shoot as many things as I can because I want to get high points. No, your job is to survive. Yeah, um, it is not to rack up score because if you don't, if you try to, you know, ignore everything else, so you can hit the golden carps, you're going to die, mm-hmm. and you're not going to get that high score. Period. You're not even going to survive to the next round. So yeah, you physically you have to move. You have to move, and you have to be fast with your gun. Uh, mm-hmm. One of the, one of the enemies we didn't even talk about were the electric eels. Oh, yeah. That like when, if they hit you. They disable your weapons. Like your weapons get like all electrified, and then yeah. suddenly you can't even shoot for a few seconds, which is totally detrimental. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I asked, I I I've reached out to the developers. Yeah, I, I talked to uh, Bulwark Games. Okay, and and I was like, I was like, what is the deal over there? <laughs> I was like, is 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 everyone on the is everyone on the development team a hardcore yeah. gamer? Mm-hmm. Uh, like a hardcore old, hardcore old school gamer. And their response was, no, not everybody is. They said yeah. a vast majority are. Um, but the quote is. We wanted to make a classic arcade game with Dick Wilde, which so that was the inspiration for it. Okay. An example being that all the levels were handcrafted so you can learn them. So this isn't just these aren't just random waves. Oh really? Okay. When every so when you go into a level, it is it is like Beat Saber. It's choreographed. Yeah. And so like after after a while you learn, okay, this is coming here and this is coming here and this is coming hmm. here. And so like if you are struggling with this game, okay it's like you know you got to get better at shooting you got to get better at dodging and then you just have to memorize you have to learn like where's my where's my trouble with this level okay so wow i i really really enjoyed that and i and and after i talked to them yeah i went back and played more Mm -hmm. and i got way better 
Oh, really? Okay. I go way better knowing that there's knowing that there's a structure to all of this. Yeah. Knowing that it's not just chaos because a lot of time it seems like just oh, it massive absolutely chaos. feels like it. Right? Yeah. There, there were there are moments where like where animals are tripping over other animals because they're all trying to get to you yeah, yeah, that yeah. quickly. And I'm like, I'm like, what is going on here? And but it's all doable. Mm-hmm. Like in and, and that was that was the ma- there was a magical moment for me today yeah. where like for the first time I think ever I was like, oh, I can do this. Like this is okay. this is balls hard. Yeah, but yeah, it is. Yeah. But it is really good, and there's there's like a method to the madness, and uh, and and I was I was fascinated, and and it was a huge turning point today, and it's when I started loving every minute of the difficulty. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. It's huh. the, it's the dark souls of wave shooters. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it it is it is that. Ooh, well, that was almost expensive. How, um, <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, there's there's uh, there's there's more to this game than just a single player that we've been talking about. Oh yeah, there there is a party mode where yeah. basically you know you can, um, kind of just like, well, so now actually I was gonna say it's like Beat Saber's party mode, but no, Beat Saber's party mode is like Dick Wild's party mode. That that's very true. Yes, uh, yeah. where basically you put on the headset, you get rack up as high of a score as you can, you hand it off to your friend, they try it, and you keep on like that. Yeah, and and yeah. every single person can pick their own weapons. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know what? I don't know exactly where to fit this in. Do you know about the aim exploit? The aim exploit? Yes. I don't think I've, I've heard about this. So uh, what you do is you start off with your aim. Okay. Okay, you go to the weapon select page. Okay. All right. Uh-huh. So now the game thinks you have an aim. Totally following. You shut off your aim. Okay. And turn, off your, turn on your move controllers. Okay. Now you're dual wielding the aim weapons. You're kidding me. Nope. So you have two more powerful guns mm-hmm. that you're just both at the, and are they totally functional? Yeah, yeah. And does it make a difference? I don't think so. Still really it's it's still so freaking crazy. <laughs> and you still have to aim them and it's just okay, well That's awesome though. Maybe they're slightly more powerful, but I mean yeah, the, now the, there's three sets of weapons to choose from. <laughs> right. But it's it's you know, and I, I don't think it's um, maybe by the time this goes up, it'll be patched or fixed or gone away. But as uh, I'm figuring, if it hasn't been patched by now, it's probably not. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's it's just an interesting little. I don't know. It's hard to call it a cheat because it really the the game is so hard, and the minuscule edge that might give you is just not not significant. Yeah. Um, well, but, so. Uh, I, you know, you know, we just probably tell people we, mm-hmm. we, we didn't, I was going to mention this at the beginning of the show okay. and I totally forgot. Um, last week we got, a, we got news that Dick Wild 2 is coming. Oh yeah. Pretty much. Not just last. Well, yeah. Like as we were recording this, it was like, so last think, week. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so last, like yeah. last week we got news Dick Wild 2 is coming and that was yeah. totally coincidental for us mm-hmm. because we had been planning on doing this episode for a while, <laughs> for, for a while. And, uh, and then, and then literally the morning that we decided to film, yeah. uh, the, the announcement came. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. They're they're taking the same grab. Hey, we, we didn't even talk about how pretty this game looks. Actually, no. it's it's very pretty. Yeah, no, it's 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 cel shaded. It's um, you know, it has that kind of fun sort of you know sense to it with the uh, even the platform you're standing on is kind of put together with slaps of cardboard and uh, so it, it looks fantastic. But anyways, it, it keeps it seems to keep the same kind of design sense, but adds a whole lot of new uh, new depth uh, co op play. Yeah. Not just co-op, but cross-platform co-op. Even better. Um, and then uh, it's, it's instead of being stationary, which is basically in every level, you are just on your own platform. It seems to be you're on a raft moving through the levels kind of linearly. So. Yeah, kind of more of a rail shooter than a wave shooter. It yeah. Seems like so. Uh, so that that's very cool. And and, and also when I talked to Bulwark Games today, mm-hmm. they said everything about Dick Wild Two is a response to the community. Yeah. They said you know we, they've been talking to people on Reddit and talking to people on Discord. And, uh, and basically every single thing that anyone has ever said about Dick Wild 1, mm-hmm. they're like, well, let's see what we can do about that in Dick Wild 2. Difficulty slider? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Actually, in, in fact, they said the addition of a two-player mode yeah. is, uh, is to make things easier. They said, oh, you're having trouble? Well, get a friend. Oh, no. That's, <laughs> that's, not, that's not how this I th- works. I think that's phenomenal. <laughs> so, uh, and, and, by, and by the way, I, I, mm-hmm. I don't know if you checked the site, but Bul- uh, Bulwark Games is like nine people made this game. Yeah, yeah. Like that that's not a very big development team. No, it's a little team and uh they've got a, a, a interesting sense of humor. Did you see their their first game they released? Was yes, it? was it Kitty Pocalypse? <laughs> Kitty Pocalypse. Oh, uh, I, basically, want, I want that on PlayStation VR. Uh, yeah, it's a tower defense game where you're building your towers to defend against hordes of really cute kittens. Adorable kittens. And just laying waste to them. <laughs> yeah, and what and what's the uh, what's the dungeon one they're making right now? Ah, uh, I didn't I don't remember Dungeon Mire or Deathmire. Yeah. yeah. Something. Um, 
it, it, I don't think they've announced a platform, so it's very mm. possible that this, this this dungeon crawler they're making or whatever yeah. it is is will be coming to PlayStation VR. I, it, I can only imagine if Dick Wild One and Two are coming to PSVR. Yeah, it, and it's interesting too. Like that, that's why when you texted me about the Dick Wild Two announcement, I'm like, I w- I've just been going through like the dev diaries of this new, right. you know, like like step by step how they're developing this dungeon crawler game, and there's not a hint that anyone is working on this. So I, I you know how it slipped. Um, my, my my one does nugget. Sure. So I, I looked up like Bulwark. Why do I that that is like ringing a bell somewhere? Yeah. And so you've got this series of games like Kid, Kitty Apocalypse. You're you're doing horrible things to cute animals. You've got Dick Wild. The developers doing horrible things to us, the gamers. Um, and and also shooting tons and tons of nature. Yeah yeah. 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 Um, so. And then I realized, actually, I've been listening to a lot of the uh, Myths and Legends podcast, which if you're into kind of that sort of stuff, um, literal, uh, 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 what's the word? You know, history of, of myths and legends, different cultures, a great podcast. And uh, Bulwark isn't just random. It actually means evildoer in Norse. Okay. And it was actually uh, the pseudonym that Odin used when he went to steal the, um, uh, the meat of poetry from the giants in Jotunheim. This, the the point being, he basically tricked nine slaves into killing each other so he could get in the good graces of the their master and work for him under false pretenses to sneak his way in. Basically, when Odin was being a nasty badass, this is the name he went under. I'm so, still here. I'm not sure who else it is. So, so basically, like <laughs> Bulwark, they're basically they have chosen the name of their company to be villainous. Nice. I like it. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic, it's, especially with the you know, the theme of the games they're doing and. Uh, just I, I do kind of like the attitude of like yeah we made a hard game yeah deal with it yeah basically yeah, yeah. alright it's that time mm-hmm. let's rate this sucker alright what is uh, our rating scale rating scale is pretty simple uh, one is yes you must buy this game if you have a PSVR it should definitely be in your library it's just the best of the best for the platform um, two is yeah sure why not uh, if it's a genre you particularly like or if it's on sale at a decent price go ahead pick it up and three is no do not buy this game. Friends don't let friends buy crap. We need to vote with our wallets and tell developers that we deserve better. So uh, one, two, or three. Where are you going to put this one? So there was a moment today where I said this is absolutely um, the most frustrating thing I've ever done in my entire life. Um, and, and I yep. was like, I was like, this is only for the hardcore. This is only for people who like really can stand a lot of punishment. Mm-hmm. Only for people who are going to like dive in deep and like really learn every single thing that this game has to offer. Followed by yeah. me going, holy crap, this is the best wave shooter I've ever played. Okay. So, and and, 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 that, and that was sort of the, the progression I went through today. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and so I have to give it, I can't give it a, I can't give it a one because, because that, that's going to say, Hey, even if you're not a big fan of wave shooters, you're going right. to love this. You got to really enjoy wave shooters. Right? right. And you really have to dedicate yourself to this one specifically. Mm-hmm. So there's like a certain type of person. Like if you love punishing games, if you love like really challenging yourself and you like getting over a really steep difficulty curve, yeah. man, you are going to absolutely love this game. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, there was, it's, it, you know, because when you play super hot mm-hmm. and the bullets are coming at you and like you're doing like this like dance, you know, this ballet in your living yeah. room. You got to kind of do that, but in like super fast motion when you're playing right. Dick Wild. I was like bobbing and weaving, I was moving around, I was like shooting, and I was like kind of covering my face at a certain point. I was just like, oh yeah, like, this is, yeah. it's insane. It's insanity. Mm-hmm. It's insanity. Mm-hmm. And you and you just got to be prepared for that. But but, it, but it's so difficult that it's going to turn off so many people before they get to that point. Yeah. And that's the reason, the only the difficulty yeah. is the only reason I'm giving it a very strong two. Mm-hmm. I love this game. And I didn't think I was going to. I was sort of dreading today. Yeah. I was like, yeah. oh man, we got to go back and play Dick Wild. That was fun. I don't think that was fun when it came out, mm-hmm. but it came out a while ago. It probably hasn't aged well. And I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm not looking forward to this. And I, and I also thought there's, there's no substance here. How are we going to talk about this for a half an yeah. hour? Man, it turned out to have way more substance than I remember. Mm-hmm. And it turned out to have way more strategy than I remember. And it turned out to be way more fun than I remember. Yeah. Like this is, this is about as close to a one as I've ever given a two. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, there's there's you know there's a lot I agree with there. You know, like we talked about the the fact that the weapons are so very different, yep. and and they really are different. It's not just functionally. Oh, this one's that gun, but shoots twenty percent percent faster. <clears throat> Borderlands, I'm looking at you. Um, but uh, uh, 
I, I have to totally agree. It's the difficulty level that really sets this apart. You know, you look at like the box art, well, whatever we're calling box art now, you know, and it looks like the worst of Wii shovelware. You just kind of <laughs> have really this redneck bad. there, and and then you see, you know, you might watch a little gameplay footage and like, okay, well, there's, but yeah, this is one of the hardest games on the platform. Yeah. Not not an exaggeration. Um, anyone who's played, I think, will will back me up on that. So. If yeah, if you're the type of gamer who's like, yes, I want a challenge, I want a game that's going to kick my ass over and over again until I finally figure it out, then you're gonna love this game. If uh, you're into you know more for a relaxed thing, and hey, if you want to sit down and play a game, oh, you can, this yeah. is not a game for you. Not the game for you. Um, so if you want, yeah, super active, really big challenge, and for an amazing price point. 15 bucks. Yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah. Okay. Um, there are developers who've charged a lot more for a lot less. Uh, I don't yeah. want to talk about my Megalith review. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, this I, I'm going to be exactly the same. If you are that type of gamer, this is absolutely a one with a thousand exclamation points behind it. Um, if you're not, then, yeah, this is kind of a miss it or maybe pick it up. You know, it's, it's, it's a two. It's a two. Yeah. yeah. At the end of the day, it's a two. Yeah. So definitely give it a shot if it's on sale, uh, or if you happen to be the type of person that we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. um, good I stuff. Not. And uh, <laughs> you know, and, I, and I, I'm not yeah. usually, yeah. I'm not usually, but but I, I kind of forced myself to do it. Right. I kind of forced myself to become that person today, and, and man, it pays off eventually. Yeah, no, I can definitely see it, and 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 I can see the attraction of it, and I can see you trying to figure it. Like you said, okay. I did figure out the pattern. I did figure out how to do this with the the harpoon and the saw blade. So now I don't care what it takes. I'm going to figure out the grenade launcher. Yeah, you know that, that's yeah. There, there's an appeal there. Yeah. All right, and uh, and, and now and now I'm like, I, I wasn't <laughs> when they first revealed Dick Wild too. I was like, really? Yeah. And now I'm sort of looking forward to it. I'm like, I, I want to stay on that raft with somebody else. And, the and co-op will be interesting in yeah. Dick Wild, and uh, the fact that like they said, oh, that's how we're going to fix the difficulty level is just by <laughs> giving you another person. Go. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I'm excited. Yeah. All right, guys, what did you think about Dick Wild? Is it was it your kind of game? Was it too difficult for you? Did you overcome the difficulty spike? Uh or uh or 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 have you been avoiding this game um because yeah. well, because because maybe I don't know. I don't think we ever told you to. Yeah. We, we we sort of we sort of sent it out to die though. I think we we yeah. did a review of it and then never talked about it again. Well, that's uh, what this year was for until today. Yeah. So uh <laughs> Obviously, uh, we always want to know what other games you want us to mm -hmm. talk about. Uh, the list is long, but uh, but man, we that's what we do. We play video games. Mm -hmm. So let us know which ones to play. All right. For another All episode right. of Why We Love PlayStation VR, I'm Brian Paul. I'm Des. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>